Imagine a game where you're the bad guy. Where you get to step into the shoes of a Goomba or Waddle Dee or something, cursed to forever walk back and forth, back and forth until some wannabe hero comes and steps on you without a second thought. They said such a game could not exist. They said it was impossible. But then a little company called Retroid came along and everything changed. Today, folks, we're playing Wonderling. Richard, hit that intro. What do you mean it's called Wonder? Richard, no, no, I am telling you, you are, okay, ready, ready, wonderful, underling, wonderling, what are you not grasping here, are, you know what, you know, I will pull up the trailer and I will prove it to you, I will prove. Wunderling. Wunderling. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to, uh, run that one back. But then, a little company called Retroid came along, and everything changed. Today, folks, we're playing Wunderling. For those of you who aren't familiar, Wunderling is an indie game released earlier this year by Retroid, a game developer company based out of Sweden. Ah. Uh that explains it. It's available on Steam, but you know me, I had to get that Switch version. This game originally crossed my radar because of its lead writer, Alex Fasciani, who you might know from his Let's Play channel Super Beard Bros, his work on The Completionists, his old Pokemon channel called The Dex, the guy's been around. I've been a fan for a while, so when I heard that he wrote a game, I was immediately interested. And boy, oh boy, I was not disappointed. The first thing you'll notice right off the bat is that this game's premise shares a lot of similarities to Mario, and that's very intentional. It takes place in the Vegetable Kingdom, where things aren't looking too hot. The cutest wicked witch around, Kohlrabi, has taken over. But though she does lament about how people compare her to that old Turtle King, her methods are far more subtle. Instead of busting into the castle guns a-blazing or summoning a massive UFO or something, she secretly poisons the king and queen and holds Princess P captive in her tower while she recovers, then creates a series of propaganda films with the help of her friend and all-around best character in the game, Dash the Cow, to paint herself as a good and gracious temporary ruler. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Just you wait. Now, the future of the Vegetable Kingdom and the safety of Princess P rests squarely on the shoulders of our hero, Carrot Man. But here's the twist and big hook of the game. You don't play as Carrot Man. Instead, you play as this little potato looking guy, one of Kohlrabi's minions. You get stomped out in the beginning by that vile Carrot Man, but Kohlrabi is able to bring you back with her magic. In typical underling fashion, you have the ability to do one of two things. Walk left, and walk right. You can't decide which direction you go in, you just have to keep walking in a straight line until you hit something before you can turn around. But thus is the curse of the goon. Or at least, it was. Because Kohlrabi doesn't stop at a simple resurrection. No. She grants you a power that all minions yearn for and fear in equal measure. The ability to jump. Sure, it might all be for a publicity stunt, but that murderous vigilante carrot man is gonna pay for what he did to this cute little lemon all the same. You better watch yourself. The first thing about this game that caught my eye was the sprite art. Everything is so bright and colorful and very easy on the eyes. 
and every world looks completely unique to boot. All the characters are super cartoony and expressive, and everything just has an all-around level of polish that you might not expect from an indie game of this caliber. At first glance, this game seems very similar to Mario in its gameplay, but it's actually not that simple. Wunderling focuses less on precise platforming and far more on puzzles. Your movement options are very, very limited, so a seemingly simple jump becomes far more difficult if you're simply facing the wrong direction. Instead of traveling from left to right to reach a flagpole at the end, Wunderling levels have you going all over the place to reach magical portals at the end. Along the way, you'll see a whole bunch of these things, the flower seeds. They're the main collectible in the game, and collecting every seed in every level of each world gets you a page of Princess P's diary. Not interested in any of that? Well, I suggest you try and pick up some regardless, because if you go too long without getting any, you, you know, spontaneously combust. Dang, apparently the ability to jump comes at no small price for a fry kid. Each world also comes with a boss fight against that rotten criminal, which are, well, I won't spoil them because I honestly think you should play it, but memorable is an understatement. Every level also has a hidden chest in it, and finding one unlocks a new costume that makes your little minion that much cuter. And every new piece of clothing comes with a great pun name to boot. There are a ton of different options to collect, so you can dress up however you want. And you'd be wrong, unless of course you go with the cool man cowboy look. Some of these chests are super well hidden, but word to the wise, Always keep an eye out for a weird place where you can turn around, because oftentimes retracing your steps will nab you some goodies. Just make sure to leave enough seeds for the way back, or else, well, you know. And for people who are extra thorough, some levels have secret exits that unlock even more levels, and others have hidden cassette tapes that let you listen to the game's poppin' soundtrack. I swear, that little ditty will be stuck in my head for a long, long time and I wouldn't have it any other way. But there is one thing about this game's gameplay that I wasn't ready for. It's freaking hard. The early levels lure you into a false sense of security, but by the time you've got a few worlds in, things get crazy. Every world gains you a new ability, like this boost barrier that allows you to jump extra far. But this isn't like a high school test where you can just dump all the stuff you learned after you finish. No, the abilities keep coming back. But that's not a bad thing, not by any means. This game does a great job of getting you acclimated with your new abilities before bringing the older ones back in, and once you get comfortable with that, it gets dialed up to 11. All I'll say is, you'll be giving that quick reset button a workout, but nothing beats the feeling of a perfectly executed run. I am one with the Wunderling, and the Wunderling is with me. Honestly, when I first started playing this game, I wasn't expecting anything crazy in the story department. Throw on some quippy one-liners, a few Mario references here and there, and call it a day. And I was, well, half right. This game does have some super witty dialogue that makes even the Wicked Witch Kohlrabi likable. And, of course, who could forget Dash the Cow? who has quickly earned a spot in my pantheon of best video game characters on sheer charm alone. The only character that I didn't like in this game was Carrot Man, but only because he's stupid, mean, and I hate him. Who does he think he is, stepping on anyone that gets in his way and roasting me so hard he makes Gary Oak look like freaking Jesus? I'll get you, Carrot Man. I will get you. This game is also not shy about referencing all your favorite Nintendo games, my favorite of which has got to be if you wait too long to jump into this portal here, and Kohlrabi says, What are you waiting for? Mother 3? Don't, Kohlrabi. Don't give me hope. But what I was trying to say is this game definitely does not slack in the story department, and let me tell you, it gets dark. You know how I've been calling the little guy a whole bunch of different things because I'm not sure what he's actually supposed to be? Well... They do the same exact thing in the game, except they actually do eventually reveal what he is, and it... Mm. And... It, oh, oh. I don't want to spoil anything, which is not something I thought I'd have to say going into this, but I'll give you a reenactment of my reaction to the ending, just to give you a taste.
But fear not, for there was still hope. The way the ending was phrased, it made it seem like there were multiple endings, and I just got the bad one. And I mean, really bad. I don't mean like, poorly written bad, I mean like, the ending of Infinity War. That kind of bad. Now I'm normally not the completionist type, but in this one case, I thought I'd take a page out of Alex's bearded brethren's book and get that good ending. Whatever it takes. So I went back and collected every seed in every level in the whole game, unlocking every page of Princess P's diary in the process. It wasn't easy, but if it meant getting a happy ending for this little yellow minion, I would endure any hardship. With the diary complete, I finally had the whole story. Surely, now, I could get that good ending. So, I beat the last level again, and... Nothing changed. Okay. Okay, okay, I still must be missing something. Uh, the, the chest. Yes, yes. A huge thing in the game is that all the minions look exactly the same. So, if I unlock every single piece of clothing and prove that minions can be different, then... And I'll have the good ending, yes, yes, that is it for sure. So, I did just that. And I got all the cassette tapes to boot. And let me tell you, it was not easy. There aren't any guides or anything that I could find, so I literally had to scour every corner of every level until I had every last thing in the game. Every seed, every chest, every portal, everything. It took some time, and my X button is begging for a break. But eventually, I did it. The game was completed. Surely now, I have proved myself worthy of seeing that good ending, for better or for worse. So I scaled that tower for a third time, marched into Princess P's room, and the same thing happened. My worst fear had been realized. There was no good ending. Side note. Later, I took to Twitter to ask the Wonderland community if there was anything that I was missing, and the game's lead programmer, Olaf Carlson, actually responded and hinted that another ending might be added in the future. You're a legend, my dude. At the time I'm recording this, that update hasn't been released yet, but who knows. I recorded this months before you're watching it, so for all I know, it could be out by now. More info by clicking the card. But just for dramatic tension, we're going to pretend that I didn't know that. Cool? Cool. Alright, now back to my character-altering revelation. I didn't understand. I did everything. I proved myself to be a true hero. The best of the best. I should be rewarded with something. A little bit of closure. Anything. And that's when it hit me. The sad truth that this game was trying to teach me all along. For the lowliest of underlings... There's no good ending. They were created for one purpose and one purpose alone. To be a minor inconvenience to any hero that comes their way before getting stomped under their boots. I know we've been playing as the bad guy here, but this game almost makes me feel bad for the little guy. I mean, he's just doing his job at the end of the day. I mean, it almost makes you... Makes you think... How many Rattatas have I torched? How many Bokoblin camps have I raided just for a couple of bucks? How many Goombas have I stomped under my boot? Oh god, this game isn't any different from the rest. I've been playing as the bad guy all along. But no more. Now. I understand the plight of the minions. I understand their pain, their suffering, their hopes and dreams, all of it. So to all you goons and underlings out there, this one's for you. In war, there is no good and evil. In war, death is inevitable. And everyone is equal in the grave. 
And that is a wild thing to learn from a game starring a lemon with a mustache. Well done, Retroid. Well done. And that's Wonderling. All joking aside, I had an absolute blast with this game. So props to the people over at Retroid. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with next. They're not sponsoring me or anything, but for real guys, I cannot recommend this game enough. It's super cheap, you can get it on Steam or the eShop, and it's not too long if you're looking for something quick to just jam through, but if you want something a little more substantial, there is a lot to do here, and I had a blast completing it. If you guys enjoyed this episode, let me know by leaving a like, and leave a comment, let me know what you thought, because I'm still getting used to this video format, so any suggestions would be greatly appreciated. There's also probably some videos floating around me or something if you want to check those out and a whole bunch of stuff on my channel if you're interested, like the first season of the Chip Tide Show or a huge backlog of Let's Plays and Pokemon and all that good stuff. So there's plenty to keep you busy until the next episode. But I will see you then. But until then, don't forget to take it easy.